Good morning, uh, this is Chris Good, and this is a video that I hope will help you with the outline for your introduction section slash review paper. And this is one from a student from last year, and I, I thought they did a really good job at uh, addressing everything that we're, that we're supposed to have in an outline. So, um, and filling, I've uh, highlighted the students' responses to the different questions in bold type. So uh, let's just go ahead and look at the research topic here. So this is the general question that your paper is um, uh, is about. Uh, the assignment was slightly different here because they were writing a review paper and not conducting an experiment. But this is the topic of the experiment you've been doing in lab. Uh, in this case, the student is writing about um, efforts toward fighting child obesity and trying to integrate those into the school day versus uh, something that's just saved for PE class, right? So uh, taking a, a more holistic approach to fighting obesity throughout the school day. So here's the takeaway message and uh, the student sort of outlines this in prose just in an argument here. It's not absolutely necessary to do this in complete sentences in the outline, but it worked out really well to say it right here. So let's take a look. Uh, if over, uh, overweight obese children are uh, not adequately fit to meet standards for exercise introduced through intervention, so if they're, if they're not fit enough even to exercise to get more fit, then it seems unlikely they'd benefit from the interventions. The inability of overweight ob or obese children to perform at the same level as other children causes uh, you know, these bad things. Uh, feelings of inadequacy, failure, shame, low self-worth um, that add to the problem of overweight. So it's worth looking into various ways fitness can be made an integral part of the school day versus being relegated to physical education classes or short-term interventions. So this, this is a great example to the so what problem. There's uh, several arguments in favor of a specific intervention here that integrates fitness into uh, the, the whole school day. So increasing fitness in ways that do not overtly address issues of obesity and overweight may reduce the chances of adverse reactions brought on by highlighting students targeted by the interventions or implementing changes to the PE curriculum. So uh, again, uh, trying to integrate this into the whole school day. Now, something is missing from here, and these are operational definitions. So uh, how is obesity measured? Um, what about fitness? How will we know if the program is successful? What about these other measurements that are discussed here, like? Uh, inadequacy and low self-worth and these things that are part of the problem. Um, and here I would ask you to consider uh, citing some papers or pasting the reference in to show where you're getting operational definitions for things like boredom or uh, memory. How are these things going to be measured? How have they been measured in the past? All right. And that brings, brings us to the beginning of the outline. Now. Uh, you can go ahead and list all of your preliminary sources in the APA style and the annotated bibliography style. And uh, please consult your hacker guide carefully because this counts. This is, it's really important that your references appear in APA style. Do it now so that uh, you can just copy and paste them into your references section later on uh, when the full on paper is due. So, Here's an example of uh, an annotated bibliography. So this is Benden, a single author, MC 2011. And uh, there's actually a typo here. This word should not be capitalized, the impact. Uh, and then in an APA style site, uh, reference listing like this, you want a hanging indent. Uh, I'll post another video to show you guys how to do that when the references section comes due. Um, and you want to italicize the uh, journal title except for prepositions This should not be capitalized. Italicize the volume number. If you know the issue number then that appears in parentheses but it's not italicized and then the page number is inclusive on which the article appears also not italicized and a period at the end of the, uh, of the reference. This is an annotation. This doesn't have to be in complete sentences and it doesn't have to follow APA style, but this just is a reminder to the writer. Uh, this is the one where uh, for the whole year the fourth grade students had stand-up desks, right? So they would stand up during class, right? And, uh, and these are the results from it too. So children burn 17% more calories. Um, you should be adding to this list all week 
all week long you should be refining this list of papers you intend to cite. It should be longer than the 10 papers that are required so that you can eliminate some that are less relevant. Don't just take the first 10 references that uh, you find. So uh, we'll go on through the list and I'll go ahead and post this paper in a Microsoft Word document uh, along with this video so that you can follow along and, and sort of come back to this as we're talking about it. All right. So uh, you don't have to list these all in this section. You can list them by section. So if you intend on citing these first three articles in the uh, introductory paragraphs, then go ahead and paste them into this part of the worksheet. Let's scroll down. When we start uh, discussing, when we begin the uh, review, uh, sorry, the introduction and outline. So the introductory paragraph or paragraphs is the first thing and this is where we're talking the most broadly so here the students actually already started writing some prose about the uh, uh, about what she intends to put in this first paragraph and it's just broad information childhood obesity is rising children who are obese grow into obese adults and then there's health risk attached with that obesity is correlated with depression and suicidal ideation so that obesity is a problem this is really a um, it's really uh, an outline of what you're going to find in the whole paper. So you'll see as we go through the outline, this introductory paragraph is kind of a roadmap of what you're going to see across the whole paper. And it's often the case that that first paragraph isn't written until last. I know that sounds weird, but you should be working on the body and the conclusions and then come back and fill in this introductory paragraph so that it serves as a roadmap for the rest of your paper. All right, so some of these interventions are successful, but there's a, a problem. And the problem is, and this is part of the argument, you're identifying a gap in the literature. How effective can more physical activity be if you're not fit to begin with? So if you're, if you're not fit enough to participate in these fitness strategies, how are they going to work for you? And are students aware of their role, their own role in staying fit, right? Uh, if they're not fit enough to begin it in the first place. And can we increase fitness during class time and, st and integrate that into the school day instead of having PE, physical activity, just be during PE or recess, which uh, a lot of schools don't have anymore. Uh, they can't afford to do PE or recess. Here are some general references that the uh, student intends to cite in this introductory paragraph, which again, probably was constructed at the end after outlining the body sections one, two, and three. All right, so following this sort of introduction, right, that provides a roadmap for the whole paper, body section number one talks about obesity stats and numbers. And here we're getting into a little shorthand. And this is what I'd like to see in your outlines. Body section one, discuss obesity stats, numbers, age, trends, and childhood obesity, and mention the health risks associated with them. And here's the papers you're going to cite in there. It's The citations aren't in APA style, but the references are, right? And you might want to uh, annotate these just a reminder to yourself of, oh yeah, uh, Lee and Hooker, that was about, uh, the, the, that contains the stats that I want to cite. And Shriver, Harris, Hubs, Tate, Topham, Page, and Barrett, uh, this is the uh, physical activity. These are just some stats on third graders. All right. Now, into the next section, and remember when you're writing the paper, you'll want to have a nice transition between these two sections. Here we've done some stats and some health risks associated with childhood obesity and into some potential dangers of obesity, continuing that last theme of health risk. Here we're getting into mental health issues, suicidal ideation, depression, bullying. Here are some references. They're referring, they're just the references that had the annotations earlier in the paper. And if you want to structure the paper, that's this way, that's fine. Adult obesity, that's the next part of the body section two, and some chronic health problems in adulthood that result from obesity that can start in childhood. And finally, this last part of the body section two, and you might want to start a body section three here and extend into, uh, so that you have t uh, body sections one, two, uh, three and four, because this turned out to be a longer review, a longer introduction section. Uh, and this has to do with the intervention types. And again, that follows from that outline paragraph or paragraphs that you saw earlier. So children like 
physical activity and how can we implement more of that with less intensity and maybe stretch it out over the school day and there's a paper here that's relevant to that. On into the next section, all right. In-class exercise, successful interventions. This has been tried before. It's low cost. And there are some other studies that mention successful methods, and here they are. And you're going to want to go into more detail in this section because we're coming on down to the end of the paper, and you're going to want to talk more about the uh, methods used in the study and the results that, that uh, they found that support these things, that uh, support the idea that the interventions have been successful. Finally, uh, in the conclusion and future direction, uh, here we're proposing more creative studies. We're proposing to uh, implement exercise programs across the school day. This is something that's been tried a little bit before, but now we want to uh, have other options for increasing activity. And there's less cited here in this last direction because it's not about what's gone on before. You've already identified a gap in the literature and uh, you're proposing something new. For you guys writing these introduction sections uh, and literature reviews, and they're gonna be the same thing, this last part about future directions is going to be, we did this study, we performed a study, here's what we manipulated, here's uh, what we measured, and that's it. That's that last paragraph and it leads into the method section for those folks who are going on to write the full length paper. Okay, so I'm gonna post this uh, sample outline so that you guys can look at it and I hope that it has been useful. I'll see you in the next video.